today. Today, when people debate or argue, they don't follow any rules. Huh? It's just my opinion against your opinion. And uh, if uh, one person wins and one person loses, how do you tell? How do you tell who's victorious and who gets defeated in any debate? Huh? You have to have rules. But people today don't observe any rules. Uh, so there's no way to tell. Uh, in Vedic debate, there's something called an adhikarana, which is a Vedic logistical syllogism. And so one has to put forward a thesis. That's the first step of an adhikarana. And then there's an antithesis. Uh, well, this is also in Western logic. We have the... Uh, Thesis and antithesis. You should sit here and listen to this. Oh, um, we have this. This is called dialectics in Western logic, material logic. Huh? Thesis and antithesis, and then a synthesis. But what is the use of synthesis? Synthesis means speculation. It means some compromise. Uh, means some combination of the thesis and the antithesis. Thank you. So, in Vedic debate, we don't have a synthesis. Uh, because one or the other has to be right or wrong. Either the thesis or the antithesis. So the next stage in Vedic debate is the Siddhanta. Siddhanta means we find a quotation from the Vedic scriptures that supports either the thesis or the antithesis. This is what's missing in Western debate, in Western logic. In Western logic, simply the strength of the argument alone is supposed to prove either the thesis or antithesis. But in Vedic logic, the quotation from the Shastra, from the scriptures, is what proves it. Why? Because in Vedic culture, the statements of the Vedas are considered absolute. And then there may be some discussion about how to interpret those statements, but that's another thing. Uh, that's called evidence. Evidence. Uh, all the words of the Vedas are derived from certain roots. And the uh, discussion or derivation of the different word roots is called grammar. And by the derivation of the word roots, one establishes the meaning of a particular shloka, and thereby whether it supports the thesis or the antithesis. But Lord Chaitanya especially after he revealed his true nature, interpreted the meaning of all Vedic roots to be Krishna. Somehow or other, every word in Sanskrit means Krishna. Uh, just one uh, aspect or another aspect, one quality or another quality of Krishna. So in this way, Lord Chaitanya taught only Krishna. But in the first part of his pastimes, he was an ordinary scholar. So he followed this whole system of debate. And in debate, there are three kinds of evidence that are accepted. Uh -huh. The Vedic quotations themselves, the analysis of the word roots, and also logical reasoning based on one's experience. And of course, Shastra. So the combination of these three there are certain rules to determine whether a conclusion is valid. There are seven different conclusions in Vedic literature, in Vedic logic, excuse me. Seven different types of conclusions. I'm not going to go into all that. But anyway, Lord Chaitanya was expert, perfect in all of these. And he could easily establish a conclusion according to the Vedic literature, and then he could demolish that conclusion and establish another conclusion. <laughs> and we see this actually in Bhagavad Gita. 
Krishna says, if you want to attain me, then just love me. Manmana bhava madbhakto madhyaji man namaskuru. He says, keep your mind always on me. Uh, think of me within your heart as your beloved and always serve me. But if you can't do that, then follow the principles of regulated devotional service. Uh, this is called Panchuratriki. Panchuratriki means five branches. There are five branches of regulated devotional service. Uh, deity worship, sacrifice, uh, karma yoga, Vedic study, and uh, general service. Panchara Triki, uh, these are actually the principles of Brahminical life. If you want to be a qualified Brahmana, you have to follow the Panchara Triki Vidhi. And there are big, thick books, manuals of how to do this. Many, many rules. Uh, from the moment you wake up in the morning until the moment you go to sleep at night, there are all these rules you have to follow, all these principles. And, of course, some are more important than others. So you can follow either the system of, of uh, seven offerings, 12 offerings, 24 offerings, or 64 offerings to the Lord. But all of the principles of Pancha Triki ultimately mean one thing, which is offering to Krishna, offering to the Lord, either in his original form of Krishna or in one of his expansions. Pancha Triki. So in this case, the measurement of one's success in spiritual life is how well he's able to follow the rules and regulations. Well, what if you can't follow the rules and regulations? We, we only have four or five regulations. No meat eating, no intoxication, no illicit sex, no gambling, and chant the holy names of the Lord as much as possible. Uh, so even sometimes we find people can't follow these rules. So Krishna says, well, if you can't follow the rules and regulations, then what do you do? Try to work for me. Karma yoga. That means that one does service under the direction of the spiritual master in which he gives up the results of his activities to the spiritual master or the sangha, the community, devotional community. And then uh, he is in turn maintained by the community. And, uh, but he, he's on the level of a servant. In other words, this isn't Brahminical life anymore. This is the life of the Kshatriyas, the Vaishyas, and the Shudras. Kshatriyas, Vaishyas, and Shudras. They are coming under the Vedic rules and regulations, but they can't always follow them strictly. Uh, sometimes they get carried away by their senses. Uh, because the very nature of Kshatriya is mode of passion. The very nature of the Vaishya, the business person, is mixed passion and ignorance. And the very nature of the Shudra is ignorance. Uh, the word Shudra means one who laments. See? So Krishna says, if you can't follow these rules of devotional service, then just work for me. All right? But then there are some people who can't even do that. They can't surrender to a bona fide spiritual master. They can't become a member of a Sangha. They have to have some independent life. Uh, so, then what does Krishna say? Cultivate knowledge. Cultivate knowledge. Because if you cultivate knowledge about Krishna from the Vedic Shastras, not just any knowledge, but the absolute truth, uh, the Rajvidya, Rajvidya, Rajaguhyam, Pavitram, Paramam, Sadam, uh, that this knowledge is the king of education. It's the most secret of all secrets. And because it gives direct perception of the self by realization, it is the purpose of religion. One should study Bhagavad Gita, Srimad Bhagavatam, and all these other scriptures. So if you study these scriptures under some kind of uh, authorized direction, some one of the paramparas, there are four paramparas, 
four disciplic successions. The Brahma Sampradaya, the Rudra Sampradaya, the Kumara Sampradaya, and the Lakshmi Sampradaya. We belong to the Brahma Sampradaya. But there are three others. They're not very well known in the West. They're available pretty much only in India and only in the Indian languages. The Brahma Sampradaya is the only one that has migrated to different parts of the world and is available in different languages, especially English. So, but one must be situated in one of these lineages and accept the conclusions of those lineages. One shouldn't just study knowledge arbitrarily or speculatively, like the impersonalists. The impersonalists, they form their own lineage outside of the four authorized Vedic liter lineages. And then they study the scriptures in their own way, speculatively, uh, where they... Uh, 